Hi guys, this is Danny as always. There are games that we wait for, long, hard, and when they come out, we binge on them in 3-4 days, and then we wait again for something else to come out. Everyone spends these waiting zones in one game or another. For many people, they are in fact, eternal. Games that have sucked us in once and for all, and from which we can't get out. Dota 2 and Counter-Strike, we will bypass today, everything is clear with them, there will be other games, click on the like, click on subscribe, if you are not subscribed yet, and let's go. Do you miss adrenaline and dynamic gameplay? The perfect place to get it all? Good old Crossout. Tense battles, dozens of different vehicles, and hundreds of parts for their customization are waiting for you. You can make a powerful, bulletproof tank and destroy your enemies just by the look of it. Or make something smaller, but fast, and get in the back of unsuspecting enemies. In any case, Crossout is the best place to show everyone who is a real pro. Download the game at the link in the description. To be honest, I was as surprised as possible with the fact that Lost Ark has been doing great for a long time. As soon as the game came out, it went to the top of the online, and that you understand almost repeated the record of Counter-Strike, gathering online in one with more than a million people. Now, of course, the people are not super many, but Stably keeps in the neighborhood of 40-50,000 people, which is a good result for our realities. I personally myself flew into Lost Ark as many as three times, because shit knows how to suck it, and I play it sometimes still. A lot of classes, relax taxation, new classes are added, and there is enough content. That is, you are essentially endlessly relaxing in the game. I actually thought that it is a joke that people who work as truckers come home and there again sit already behind the computer steering wheel. And then I saw this. You will not believe, but such people every day more and more, and the game is already a dozen years old. People keep driving back and forth, getting high off the ride. I certainly realize there's some gimmick in that, but not that much. A billion trucks, a billion tracks, and a billion different loads. All in all addictive, as you can imagine. If the last game exists with a dozen years, well maybe a little bit more, then EVE Online is already 20 years old and in it, online is not less. Space gamers who have been playing it for 20 years and still enjoy it a lot. People have already married, 15 children made, graying themselves, but continue to fly on spaceships and get high from this game. Naturally, there must be something in it that can keep players playing for so long. Basically, it's a huge map and complete freedom of action. You can do anything you want in this game, and that's really cool. And this is Warframe, a game in which people live, endlessly go through missions, spend hours, grind various resources, watch the story, and collect builds. Yeah, the kind where you unknowingly meet some player, watch an entire map of enemies die at the snap of your fingers, and you're like, wow, I want to do that. And then, after a couple of hundred hours of play, you realize that to also kill enemies, you need to spend another 500 hours to find, knock out, buy, and craft everything. Of the cool stuff, the developers are still still confidently creating updates and developing the game after all these years, release new Warframes, weapons, prime versions, and try to make content. It is true, the most desperate and unrelated to each other, not so long ago, Daviri came out, where you generally play a role-playing game. There is Railjack, where you are like an EVE online in space flying. You can even catch fish. Content, as you realized a lot of content, and all of it, pumps your account infinitely long. <laughs> But Path of Exile has a slightly different situation. In Warframe, you endlessly pump and improve your account. One, without any seasons and other things. Then in Path of Exile, most people come just for the seasons, because the developers dramatically change everything with the release of each season. Because of this, a lot of people are just reminded again that this game is there. That with a new season, it's time to get in. And that's it. You're once again consumed with endless grind. Diablo 4 also tries to follow this formula, but it succeeds much worse because there is less content, and here it's just as good.
And here is a specific game. Players who played it are divided into two types. The first ones are those who came in, tried it, didn't understand it, because it is, frankly speaking, not very friendly, and left. But others who went through the story campaign, learned the whole essence of the game and everything else, felt that it is good, and now they've been grind for months. In the game, not only is the story healthy, but you can also buy DLC, which is as gigantic as the game itself. So, before you know it, you're catching the same monster for the hundredth time, just because you like it, especially in co-op. And here, you don't need co-op. You don't have to play online, although you can. This is the legendary Bannerlord, which every self-respecting man returns to once a year. Mount and Blade is like Skyrim. It is not a fact that you will live in the game, but it is a fact that you will return there often to feel the charm of huge battles again, superiority on the battlefield, or situations when you kill a small army solo. As for me, it's a great game that needs no introduction for a long time. the developers of Deep Rock. Galactic suddenly released an auto-shooter in this universe, but we will not talk about it, and better touch on the original game, which is gradually growing online too. Even taking into account the fact that the developers somehow forgot about the game a bit, and haven't released anything worthwhile for a long time, maybe people just like digging in the mines or feeling like dwarves. Either way, I'm one of them. Overall, the game hooks you with its destructibility quests and the ability to get wasted after a mission. The latter is really fun. People live here, it's like a full-fledged life. I also often come here to play on my Kunoichi. In general, Black Desert is a unique MMORPG. If in some Warcraft you quickly dressed up and then just play from season to season anew, then in this game is not like that. First of all, seasons here are trifles, because you play them not from the main character, but the main one you dress for years. People who play Black Desert steadily for the last 3-4 to four years are very much advanced and you just cannot catch up with them, especially considering that the developers are constantly pushing back the bar of the final content. But nevertheless, grind, earn money, and fight with other players here is very pleasant. That's why the online is consistently healthy, and with each new character becomes even more. This game doesn't give a shit about online. This is RimWorld, a game that is unique in its nature. It's not even a game, but a simulation of different stories that happen to your settlers. And the variability of events here is such that no major project with it and next to it and did not stand. The number of details is just off the scale, from banal different types of diseases, including psychological trauma, to cannibalism, attacks of wild animals or mutants. What? Even the settlers themselves can kill each other if something goes wrong. That's the the beauty of this game, that's why, even after spending thousands of hours on the game, it will give you new emotions time after time. And Naraka Blade Point is a bit of a strange game. This is where, you know, it's either yours or it's not really yours. It's like with anime games, if you didn't like Genshin Impact, then most likely Honkai and stuff isn't even worth trying. It's the same with near Chinese games. Naraka is the best example. If you got high with Warriors Orochi, for example, and generally adore Chinese themes, then congratulations. You have the best battle royal and one of the best Chinese games in general. Great animation, graphics, combat, and everything else. Many people have been sitting in it for years. As a matter of fact, many people sit in PUBG, even though it's been a long time since its release. It spawned a million battle royales, but among games, it was the first to grow online so much, and it still tops Steam's list for the largest number of simultaneous online players. Now, on average, half a million players play it every day, lots of tournaments, teams, the game itself is still evolving and is still one of the best battle royale games out there. I really quit it when it came out, but a lot of people are still playing it. 
just like in tanks. Of course, you could put here World of Tanks, but I decided not to bother, and so in front of you, War Thunder. Because why do you need to divide into a million world of something, when here, a united front battles take place among tanks and airplanes? Well, and the fleet has also been tightened up. Plus, the developers have improved graphics since the release of Yes and in general, for the game follow. I'm not a fan of such realistic battles, but the fans of these games just a lot. Why am I not a fan? I play Rainbow Six Siege, for example, sometimes. I won't say that I live there, no. But many people who play it a lot and daily, follow the tournaments and so on, can confirm that Ubisoft, in general, does not support it so badly. There are already released a million different add-ons. The same million new characters are imported every season. It is true that it has already gone a little bit beyond full realism. Because there are a lot of strange abilities, but nevertheless, the game is as cool as possible and feels great for almost 10 years. It peaked in 2020, but not much has changed online since then and people are still playing it. You can write in which game you live in and don't forget to like and subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. I'm Denny, as always, and have a good day.